Hi again. Okay. Next, I'm going to be talking to you about defense mechanisms. So you probably heard this term. It's pretty popular in culture at this point. Um, things like denial is a pretty obvious one that you might have heard of, but there's a lot of other ones. And the reason I'm telling you about these is because we all have them. It's our way of getting through life, basically. And of course, the more trauma somebody has had, the more stress and difficulty in life, the more defense me mechanisms that they have to have to be able to get through life. People have to have these or else they would fall apart. They wouldn't be able to go through their day. They wouldn't be able to go to work because when we have overwhelming grief and sadness and pain and hurt and resentments and hopelessness, it's incredibly hard to get up and go through life. When we have shame and we're filled with regret and guilt, it's these are necessary to be able to get up and go. However, these are what we develop when we're young, usually. Things that we develop when we're kids. So they're a child's version of coping and not an adult version. Adults can come up with healthier ways to cope with our stressors instead of having to use these. Does this mean that all functional, healthy adults, even people like counselors don't use these? No, I use some of these all the time. That's not what it's saying. It's saying if your life is nothing but defense mechanisms, that means that people are not gonna uh, wanna admit that they have a substance use problem or that their addiction has hurt their children, for example, or that they have problems in their life at all, right? We will use these from time to time, but the goal ultimately is to not have to use them at all and to use healthier things because when we use them, we are actually, we're hurting ourselves more than anybody. We're not hurting other people, we're hurting ourselves. We're preventing ourselves from growing. They're the roadblocks that keep us from growing, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what they are and notice if you do them in yourself and you can come to therapy and you can work towards doing things differently, okay? So the first one is avoidance, which is exactly like how it sounds. People that have avoidance tendencies tend to avoid major problems in life and to not want to deal with the problem, okay? They will deal with it later. It's like procrastination, right? It's I'll deal with it later, I'll deal with it tomorrow, I'll deal with it next year, I don't wanna do this right now. And if you think about trauma, how, massive that was to us especially if we had it when we were younger we couldn't deal with it there's no way we could have dealt with all the pain from it so we pushed it off until later and then we end up carrying it around some people their whole lives and never actually deal with it so with avoidance what you can turn it into is okay maybe i really can't deal with this right now but i have to deal with it eventually and that's where therapy can come in to help you deal with it okay denial like I said, popular one, that didn't happen, um, it's not real, um, I'm just gonna pretend it's not there. And the big problem with this one is everybody else can see it's there but you. And they're all looking at you like, what's? why are you pretending this isn't there? And it hurts people. People, you know, let's say it, something happens in childhood, that child goes to their parent and said, hey, this really hurt me when I was a kid that this happened. And the parent goes, that didn't happen. How damaging would that be to that kid who's now maybe a teenager or an adult? That is abuse in itself to that person because it's denying their experience, right? So it's very painful for other people to have denial. And this happens a lot in addiction, obviously, because the addiction doesn't want you to think it's a problem. So we'll make up a bunch of excuses about why it's not. Okay. The next one is displacement, which means taking an emotion, whatever emotion that you're feeling and converting it into a safer, more acceptable substitute. So here's an example. A man is criticized by, oh, I'm sorry. That's my phone. A man is criticized by his boss uh, and feels belittled, unappreciated, and angry. He's unable to express anger at work for fear and then he comes home and takes it on his wife takes it on his kids takes it out on the dog it's taking that emotion and putting it on somebody who it feels safer to put it out on bullies are the best example of this i can't deal with whatever pain i'm dealing with i'm going to take it out on somebody else right disassociation is a very common one with trauma where we will take something and disconnect from it and so it's different than denial because it's more of a physical situation 
it's like disconnecting mind from body. So example would be people that, if you've ever heard this, will imagine their trauma, not imagine it, I'm sorry, they'll, they'll recall their trauma. And when they look at the trauma, they're looking at from a different perspective. They're looking at it not as through the eyes of themselves, but they're seeing it from um, a third person. They're seeing it from above or as if they're looking at themselves like a movie. Or during the trauma that happens, they can see themselves from above. This can also happen, though, with things like memory loss, blanks in memory, is disassociation. Um, connecting, or sorry, disconnecting mind from body, taking pain and stuffing it into our bodies. That's why people that have trauma, we usually have a lot of physical issues because we take tension and pain and we stuff it into our bodies because it's safer to deal with. That is disassociation, okay? Um, disconnecting parts of our mind that carry the memories and thoughts from the trauma and kind of putting them away in a different box. The extreme form of this is when people end up having multiple personalities because they've split so much because the trauma was so intense. They had to split, right? And it doesn't make that person crazy or bad. It was the only way their brain could deal with what was going on. Okay. Distortion is when a person reshapes their reality to suit their needs. So it's like you're seeing the clear pic picture and they're looking through um, one of those kaleidoscopes and that's what they see and you're trying to talk to them about it and they aren't getting what you're saying and they're not going to because you're explaining your reality and their reality looks completely differently. Okay, Fantasy is very similar to that. Reality is so painful, people get caught in daydreaming. They get caught in what they want to happen instead of what's actually happen, happening. Intellectualization, what that means is people, especially people that are very smart, use this a lot to use logic to look at problems and not emotion at all. They take emotion out of it. They just use facts or facts, or they it says they use excessive use of intellectual vocabulary, um, academic reasoning, this is why abuse happens, I know it happens for this reason, um, or addiction, I know my addiction, here's a better example, I, I know my addiction is a disease and I'm powerless over that disease, so I'm just going to keep using. That's that exactly the point of it being a disease, but they'll use that to keep going, okay? Minimization is taking something that is a problem and shrinking it down into nothing until it's this small and it's not a problem anymore because it's this small, right? Okay, it's taking a mountain and turning it into a molehill of problems and just saying like, my dad wasn't that abusive, everyone else's dads in high school got drunk all the time. Um, that's not the case. I've had people say this a lot to me where my childhood was good. I didn't have anything happen to me, except mom and dad were never there, except mom and dad were using. It's taking it and looking at it in a way that makes them feel better about it, but it's not the reality. Passive aggressive behavior is, it's very easy to do it and a lot of people do it. You don't wanna be aggressive and mean about things, which is good, that's not a healthy thing either but you also don't want to be direct about things, which would be, here's how I'm feeling, here's what I need, here's what I want, here's what I'm mad at you about, and here's why. Instead, it's sarcasm. It's posting things online on social media later on to complain about somebody. It's making jokes about things. Um, it's saying things under your breath, right? It's gossiping to other people. That's passive aggression. It's taking out this anger or hostility or issues in either a nonverbal way, pouting would be another one, or to a different person. Um, it would be like dragging your feet if you're mad about having to go somewhere. Missing appointments, people do that to us all the time because they're mad about having to be here. That's passive aggression, okay? Perfectionism is where, of course, trying to do everything perfectly so that you're good enough or um, no one can say anything negative to you, right? It seems like a good thing, but it's destructive because that person's miserable. <laughs> How much pressure do you have on yourself? You can't do anything perfectly, so you think you failed. You think you're not good enough, okay? It's a fear of rejection and disapproval that drives this. Um, uh, rationalization is where people use arguments to try and justify their behavior. 
It's much like a relapse justification where I'm going to have a good excuse for why I'm doing this thing. Um, I'm going to break my diet because I deserved it. I had a hard day at work, right? Everybody does this. <laughs> Everybody does this and it's harmful only to that person really usually. Um, it can be harmful to other people, but here's why this happened or here's why I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to justify it. Reaction formation is where um, we don't like what we're seeing basically. So we try to do the opposite. Let me give you a good example. A preacher who preaches passionately about abstinence, but, uh, and you know, about sex before marriage, and he's out living a sexually impure life in his private life. So it's preaching one thing or putting one thing out to the world and in reality doing something different. It's doing the opposite thing. So I'm gonna put on this mask for other people, but when I go home, I'm gonna do something differently. Opposite of what I'm doing. Repression, suppression is where we push down things. This is blocking emotions, blocking desires. We're just gonna push and push and push until it explodes, typically, right? But we're not comfortable with things, we don't wanna deal with things, so we just push them down. And that would include even, other than emotions, it would include, oh, they're, that, I don't really have a problem with that person. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to push it down. I don't have to talk to them about what I'm feeling. We want to avoid conflict, too. Sarcasm is part of passive aggression, so I'm going to skip that one. Somatization is, like I mentioned, with disassociation, where we take emotion and put it into our body. We turn it into a bodily issue. So this is somebody that has a lot of chronic health issues, Is can be doing this. So chronic headaches ulcers, stomach issues, nausea, diarrhea, we take it and we push it into the body. And that's really hard to unlearn to do it, but learning other coping skills uh, can really help deal with those emotions in other ways. Sublimation is where we take um, unacceptable drives that we want to do, like either being aggressive or hostile. Uh, instead, we put them into these acceptable channels, which would be like housework. I'm a feeling a lot of resentment, so I'm gonna do housework. I'm just gonna clean for hours and hours to try and get rid of the emotion or even anxiety, try and get rid of the anxiety. I'm gonna go to work instead. I'm gonna exercise instead. This is like the healthier of the ones, but what it means is, is that we don't deal with the original problem. We just let that slide and push it into something else. It's substitution. So when people tell me I'm not using anymore, I just work all the time, but they don't actually have any coping skills. So if something happens in life that they can't avoid, they end up using to deal with it. Withdrawal means isolation, withdrawing from people. So you don't have to have conflict. You don't have to have hard conversations. You don't have to share your feelings. You don't have to deal with life. Some people don't deal with life. They just stay in their house, right? They withdraw from reality and from difficult emotions. So all of these can be a problem, and especially if you do them all at once. Um, it's really hard to talk to somebody like that too, right? That doesn't understand what reality is, as I'm sure you might see. So think about working with us to do something different, to at least try something different. You can go back to these if you want, but like, let's try something else. Why not? It's not gonna hurt. So we're here for that if you want to.